want this to be a thriving community, not just in the economic sense, but as far as the individuals that are here as well. Mm -hmm. I want to see them prosper and do well. And yes. that, that's my passion. I want to hear something from you. I think they want to hear what are your pet peeves? What gets under your skin in relation to the youth and how they end up in the hands of the authorities and they get into the juvenile system and then they end up uh, in the prison system and it's a pipeline. Um, let's, let's go backwards. Let's talk about where this all starts. What's the problem here? Uh, how can we deal with it or even confront it? It, goes, it all goes back to educating and educating the parents, educating the students at an early age on their rights. Mm. There is a lack of knowledge of rights that uh, our juveniles face. When they get arrested and they just start talking, everything you say can and will be held against you. Keep your mouth shut. You know, I hate to put it like that, but it's that simple. Don't say anything. They, uh, police officers are notorious for getting you to feel comfortable and to get you to talk. They'll try to scare you. You know, they, 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 they're they allowed to do that. They will lie to you, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people, oh, police officers, yes, they do. When they are questioning you and they're trying to get you to um, to confess or to, to give, uh, to talk about somebody else, to yes. they will lie. They will say that, you know, your friends already told them. They will pretend to have facts that they don't have. Mm -hmm. The best advice I can give to a juvenile or an adult is do not say anything without a lawyer present. Mm. Okay? Um, you did a segment with uh, Attorney yes. Tori Newsom. Yes. He did a fabulous seminar um, last year, I believe it was, the year before. I know he did it like two or three times where he said what to do when you get stuck. We really have to look at our youth and look at what they're pleading to. You know, uh, I'm one of them, we plead, you know, uh, instead of doing six to 30, we plead to five, do two and a half. It's not, it's more than just a calendar. It's your life. It's your it, life. It's not only you, it's everybody that's connected to you. And so when you talk about uh, the youth and when you talk about what they're hit with when they're young and what to say and what not to say, it goes back to education. We're not being informed. A lot of stuff I just didn't know, mm -hmm. especially I'm scared. I mean, I don't know what to say, and a lot of our family members, we just were not informed, you know, and I had somebody tell me, I'm not going to mention me, tell me, say, son, if you don't know, just look on YouTube. <laughs> 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 I mean, you know, you'd be surprised. Like Facebook, No right? joke. You can yes. go on YouTube and there's whole seminars, you know, and so we really don't have an excuse. Yes. I just got out of jail or prison. Mm -hmm. I come into an interview or some job place for employment. And I have the resume with me, and I have the, uh, the uh, I guess I'm filling out the application. Where, what happens here? How does that uh, box situation work out with what I'm doing? Okay, well, the box, it used to signify, there's a question that says, have you ever been arrested? Have you ever been convicted? You no longer have to check that box. Actually, that box was supposed to have been removed from applications. Mm -hmm. I know there are some companies that have not upgraded their applications, okay. but you are not required to fill out that question. Okay. Okay? It mm -hmm. is against the law for them to ask you on the application. Listen, how does that work? Because um, they're still going to look up my, my background. So what is the purpose of this? How does, how does it help me? Right. We're not taking away an employer's right to do due diligence mm -hmm. because they have a responsibility to their customers, mm -hmm. you know, as well to make sure that the people that they're sending out to your home, if it's that type of situation or in the store, is going to be someone that is not going to harm the community. So they have to do their due diligence. What this bill does, it used to be if you check that box, mm -hmm. your application got filed, sometimes it got thrown away. That individual never received the opportunity to interview for a job, and that's what it was all about. Mm -hmm. Giving them the opportunity to get in front of an employer and sell themselves. This is why you should hire me. Mm -hmm. I'm not the same person I was 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, I went back to school. You know, I've worked, you know, all these little piecemeal part-time jobs here, there, everywhere to support my family. Yes. That is all I want to do is take care of my family. Yes, I made a mistake. You have the right to review my background, mm -hmm. but I'm asking that you not hold my background against me and you give me that opportunity. That employer then says, okay, you know what? You impressed me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you a chance. Brian Stevenson talks about that proximity, being close to the issue at hand. If you're not close to the issue at hand, you don't know what to do. Right. 
if you don't know what's going on on the ground, as you do, uh, if you're not in the field, you don't really know how to vote or who to talk to, who your elected officials are, to even make a difference. Uh, how do we get close to the issue at hand? Who do we talk to first? Because some people might not even go to a city council meeting. Um, do I come talk to you? Maybe you can maybe educate me on who to talk Where to. Where do I go to even say, okay, because everybody's an educator on every level. We don't know. We, I don't know everything. And so what do I do starting from here? What, you know, I'm just a person that's got a disgruntled child and the school system is acting up. What do I, so you're saying the first thing I need to do is go to the city council meeting? What, what, what's the first thing? The first thing you need to do, and this is the advice I give everybody, find your passion. If your passion is education, yes, you should be at every school board meeting. Mm. If your uh, passion is improving the city that you live in, you should be at every city hall meeting. If it is the state, we hold uh, committee meetings in Chicago pretty all the time, every week. There's a committee meeting on something in Chicago. If you can't make it to Springfield, you can darn sure make it to Chicago. The bus goes right down there. <laughs> Meetings are right at the, uh, the State of Illinois building. Mm -hmm. It's accessible. You need to come to the meeting. County board, go to the meetings. Find your passion. What is your one issue that you want to work on? Yes. And until you can identify that, you can't be all over the place. Find your passion. My passion is, is education. It mm -hmm. still is education. Mm -hmm. I started with education on the school board. I'm the chair of the education committee in the house. Mm -hmm. I stuck with my passion. Mm -hmm. I'm doing other things because I have passions for other things, but education is my core passion. Yeah, yeah. You know, one will get you to the next level. But if you don't even have that first one, oh, I want to do this, I want to do that, you're not going to be successful. Wow. Find your passion. Education, school board, you've got to go to the meetings. So if you, you know, you're complaining about the way the city is being ran, go to the council meetings. You may learn something if you go to these meetings. You may have a better understanding of why the mayor did X versus Y. Don't just rely on a Facebook post. Mm -hmm. Facebook does not tell you everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. You have to get involved. You, you know what? I was just going to insert here. How do you have time? <laughs> to do all the, I mean, I, I was just gonna ask, like, do you get sleep? Like, you know, every other time she goes to Springfield, she's, I mean, she's everywhere and yet still on point, still has time to have a conversation and do the things she does effectively. And so, but then you answer the question your passion. Your passion allows you to be able to do all that you do. And I, I mean, what, how did you get that passion? What struck you? What hit you in the head? When it was it you were 16 years old? What, <laughs> what, 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 what hit you in the head to make you say, you know what? I'm sick of this. Well, for me, again, going back to education, I had a, my son was in middle school. He failed the entire year. Failed every single class, and they passed him to the next grade. I had a problem with that. I'm like, he did not perform. So I went to the school first, you know, started there, talked to the principal, who had the audacity to tell me that even though he had failed every class, he had absorbed enough sitting in the classroom to advance to the next grade. Mm. I, I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> I then went to the school board, mm -hmm. voiced my same concern, asked, because you have to petition for your child to be held back. Mm -hmm. I demanded that he be held back because he didn't learn anything and the school board concurred with the principal. Well, if the principal felt that he absorbed enough, then we're okay with that and we're just gonna let him go. No, you're passing these children through unprepared year after year and then you question why our children end up in the uh, correctional system. Mm. Why are they dropping out? If you look at the ninth grade uh, dropout rate, it's it's ridiculous. We are losing our children in the ninth grade because they are not prepared. They can't do the math. Mm -hmm. They can't read. They can't write. They cannot keep up and they're embarrassed. Yeah. They are embarrassed. So it's easier for them to just say, forget it. I'm going to go join this gang. I'm going to make street money versus, you know, making money the, the legal way. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we're not providing them with the resources that the taxpayers are paying for. Yes. You know, they're paying for this education. You look at your tax bill, was it 60 some percent of that bill is going to the school district mm -hmm. and your child is not getting educated? Oh yeah, I was at the school board meeting. I was up, because I'm a homeowner. I was upset. Yes. 
You know, I'm paying taxes and you're not utilizing my money correctly. I had a problem with that. Started stalking those school board meetings. I was looking at the fiscal um, statements that they were putting out and I just kept seeing raise after raise after raise for these administrators. You're not paying the teachers. But you got all these administrators doing what? I had no idea. I want you to speak your heart and tell us why we need to get out and vote, why we need to make a difference, how do we make that happen, and even talk about the fact that there are people out there that don't want to do it, and talk about the consequences okay. of not making a difference. All right. Well, let me just start with voter registration. I'm going to start there, and then we're going to take it all the way through. Take it there. All right. We have voter registration drives all the time at the churches, the park district, the, the city hall. Everybody's doing a voter drive. Let's get them registered to vote. That's great. We want everybody registered to vote because we die for the right to vote. Yeah. So let's get registered. But then we need to follow that through because our turnout on voting on uh, election day mm -hmm. is dismal. It is below standard. When you talk about, well, why we aren't progressing and how come Waukegan ain't moving forward? How come North Chicago's not moving forward? You know, how come we're not the same as Libertyville Lake Forest? Talk about Look at their voting numbers. They are coming out in droves. They are exercising their right to put the candidates in office that are representing them, that are going to do the things that they need to move them forward. We are not doing that. I want to pull into that. Why is there a difference in demographics here? Why is the difference, what's different between North Chicago and, and, and Libertyville? Talk about that. What? Engage voters. They are engaged, they do the research. Why are they more engaged than us? Because they understand the power behind their vote. And we don't. And we don't. We are very apathetic. We think that that vote doesn't count. My one vote is not gonna make a difference. Mm -hmm. They know their one vote will make a difference. And they're not just voting, they're getting involved. We talked about that. The importance of getting involved in campaigns, mm -hmm. supporting you know, your candidates. Put that sign out in your yard. Don't be afraid. Put it out there. Let them know that, hey, this is who I support because they support me, they support my values, and they're going to do what I need to do. I want to see my district prosper. I want to see my children, you know, take it to the next level. These school board meetings, you have 20 people running for the school board all the time, but we're basing them on popularity contests. We're not looking at their values. We're not looking at what are they really going to do besides say I'm a school board member. Mm -hmm. You know, I have people come to me all the time and say I want to run for office. My first question is why? Why mm -hmm. do you want to run for office? What have you done? Oh, I haven't done anything. Do you vote? No? Well then why are you trying to run for office? You're not voting. You're mm -hmm. not engaged. You haven't participated anywhere in the process. So then my next question, okay, what position you want to uh, run for? Mm -hmm. They will always want to go for the highest position. <laughs> oh, I want to run for the county. I want to run for mayor. I want to run, okay, have you been to any of the meetings? Mm -hmm. No, you don't go to the meetings, but you want to run for the office. Mm -hmm. See, that makes no sense to me because that's just telling me that you just, you're looking for a paycheck. Mm -hmm. And you have a lot of people out here running for office simply for a paycheck. Mm -hmm. It's not about because you will never make enough money because you, you do more work than what you're going to get paid for. My job does not pay me for all the hours that I put in.